Praise the Lord. We've been having church up in here today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. My, look at you go, guys. You survived the snow, Mageddon, or whatever it was. <laughs> it is good that God has provided for us and brought us here safely. For you who are tuning in, we do welcome you. We thank God for the technology that allows us to bring the word and this worship experience to you in your home or wherever you may be tuning in as well. And we just thank God for being here moving and ministering uh, in such a powerful way. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer and ask him specifically to open our minds uh, to receive a word from him, understanding and revelation, an illumination of the revelation, and for him to help us pay attention. You know, because I know it's tough. We live in a day and age where everything's changing every few minutes. And, and, and here we're focusing on God's word uh, in this covenant that we've been talking about. And we may, we may just need some divine assistance to help us focus for a few minutes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you maybe even had too much coffee this morning and you need a little attention to help to get your attention. So this is so important what we're looking at today. We don't want to miss it. So let's pray. Father, we pray now as we come to you uh, by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, move and minister in our lives. Give us revelation, Lord God, from you for our lives today. Lord God, let it be an illuminating factor that we can walk in this day, applying your word this week, Lord, so that we can live as more than overcomers in and through Christ Jesus. We do ask you, Holy Spirit, open our minds and our ears and our eyes and our heart and our understanding to your word. By your spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. We get divine assistance in this. Uh, I was, I was, as I was preparing this, the Lord took me back to a memory I had of preaching a revival service, and it was a tent meeting, and it was a rather large uh, setup uh, some years back, and, and as I arrived there, it was an evening service, and uh, as I arrived there, uh, I, one thing I noticed, everybody was scrambling about. Everybody seemed a little panting. And, uh, and I was kind of like, you know, like, what's going on here? And they were running over to the keyboard, and, and they were checking things out, and they were checking wires, and they would run over to the microphones, and they were running over to uh, the lights uh, they had. Nothing was working. Nothing was working. And, uh, and they were telling me, you know, if we don't get everything up, uh, we're going to have to cancel uh, the service tonight because, you know, as soon, as soon as the sun goes down without the lights, everybody be here in darkness. There's no keyboard. There's no microphones. There's nothing working. And, uh, and I said, well, do you know, have any idea what's wrong? You know, it, are we plugged into a power source? They said, oh, yeah, yeah, there's a meter base out here. They bring up, brought a temporary in, and, uh, and here's all of our plugs. We're plugged in. We keep checking. Look, look. And they brought me over, and they unplugged the keyboard and plugged it back in, and they went over to the amp, and they pl unplugged it, and nothing, no green light, no red light. But we just, we're not going to be able to do the service tonight. Nothing is working. And now I used to troubleshoot for uh, electrical heating and air company for years. So uh, in learning to troubleshoot, you always go back to the basics. You go back to the basics. You know, is the breaker on? Okay, something that simple. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, like I said before, I've traveled three hours in traffic before to find that someone's uh, AC system's not working because they had the thermostat set on heat rather than AC. And uh, so we learned to take them through some basics. And, uh, you know, and even though we look back at the meter base where the temporary meter base was, everything looked okay. But when I, I said, we got to get back to the basics. There's no power here on this board at all. That means the, the source has been uh, compromised. So I go and I go to the main base of where I see the electrician has this temporary going and they have a meter there so they can pay for what they use. And I noticed it looked almost a little not just right. So I just took that glass meter and pushed and it went in, click, and everything came on. And the Lord brought that to my mind and said, that is a lot of how the church can be. That we can look like everything is in order. Everything, we've done it by order, we are in charge, everything's ready, but there's no power. And sometimes we're running about trying to figure out why is there no power 
when we really need to get back to the basic and make sure that we're plugged into the supernatural. So I want to talk about being plugged into the supernatural this morning. I want to get you not looking like the church and not being the church. I don't want you to look like a Christian, but you're not really a Christian who is transforming the society you live in. That you're not light and you're not soft. No, no facade, no hypocrisy. We're the real deal. The world needs the real deal. Your family needs the real deal. Your body needs the real deal. We need to be plugged into the supernatural source of Almighty God. No more playing, no more acting, no more drama. We need the real deal. So I want to make sure as I walked up to that meter base and as I walked up and I just took my hands and laid on it and pushed it in and everything came on, I want to come lay hands on you today and I'm going to push you just a little bit and plug you in or make sure you're plugged in. And if you're plugged in and got a little corroded, I'll unplug you and plug you back so that you can get full source and have 220 flowing through your life today. Hallelujah. Because how many of you believe that God is still a miracle working God? How many of you believe that God still heals? How many of you believe that God still delivers people from the clutches of Satan? That their life was one day this way, but they got delivered, set free, born again, and now they're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. I believe we're in a house today that believes in the authentic, genuine power of God, and we want to be plugged into that. Because God has created us for so much more than we see with our natural eyes. There is more coming against you in the unseen than, you, than, than in the seen. But greater is he who is for you than he who is against you. And we need to tap into the supernatural power. Now, God has given us many ways to tap into his power. But one of the basics, like I said, let's get back to the basics. Like when I went to the meter base, let's get to the basics. One way that God has given us to be tapped into his supernatural power is through baptism. And it's so exciting that next Sunday we're going to have one of those uh, baptisms here in this earth. This building was built on this principle. When we built this building, I said, I want a baptis, uh, baptism of, over our head that during praise and worship, because this is a part of worship, the screen will rise and in the middle of the hands being lifted and folks shouting and praising God, we will be baptizing people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And uh, because baptism is very important. Now, there are three baptisms that are needed for this optimum life to be plugged into the power, the full power of God. And the first one is where the Holy Spirit will baptize you into the body of Christ. That's salvation. Did you know when you get saved, don't tell me you're afraid of the Holy Ghost. You better tell the devil he is a liar. Because without the Holy Ghost, you're not saved. You say, well, I'm scared of that Holy Ghost stuff. Those charismatic stuff. Nope, nope. That's the lie from the devil. Because he wants you to be afraid of the very one that supernaturally brings you, inducts you, and puts you into the body of Christ. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, For by one Spirit, this Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, what well, we've all been made to drink into one Spirit. So the Holy Spirit baptizes. There's a miracle happens when you get saved. When you get saved, the miracle of your sins being forgiven is amazing. The miracle of condemnation being lifted off of you is amazing. The miracle of you having the peace that surpasses all understanding of God is amazing. But what is even more amazing is you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away and all has become new. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now a, not a, a, you're not an, a stranger to God, but you are a son or a daughter of God. A miracle happens where you are birthed into the family of God. You become a part of his family, and it's the Holy Spirit that does that. 
So this word baptizo fully immerses what it means. That's why we fully immerse folks in this baptistry or if we're out by a waterway. We do it and it's a believer's baptism because he said believe and be baptized. And, you know, we, uh, we, we definitely dedicate babies to the Lord. But let me tell you why. Uh, that baby can't believe. That infant can't believe on its own. So when it becomes an adult or an age of accountability, they need to know that they can make a choice to serve God or not, to give their life to Christ or not. And when they do, they need to be water baptized uh, uh, as this outward expression of an inward work. So it begins with the inward work where the Holy Spirit fully immerses you into the body of Christ. You're not partially saved because you've only been saved one hour. You're fully immersed. You had the same covenant rights as a son or daughter of God at five minutes of being a Christian as someone who's been a Christian for 50 years. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Because you're fully immersed. The Holy Spirit fully... You're not a stepchild... You're not earning your right as a child of God. The Holy Spirit does a miracle. Picture this. You give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. You confess Jesus as Lord of your life. The Holy Spirit takes you supernaturally and immerses you into the body of Christ. You are now a functioning, living part of the body of Christ. A son, a daughter of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I can't do that for you. You can't do that for yourself. But the Holy Spirit does. That is one of the things that he does. That is the baptism into the body of Christ that comes through salvation. Then secondly, that inward work is a work that has been done because of your faith. Now, faith without works is dead. So now God has says, I want you to make a public proclamation and be unashamed to let everyone know what the Holy Spirit has done in you. The Holy Spirit has immersed you into the body of Christ. You died to yourself. You're now alive unto God. You're a Christian. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're on your way to heaven. And until then, you're going to bring some heaven to earth as you advance God's kingdom here. Now, make that proclamation. And that's why he said, Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we are, next Sunday, going to be baptizing. The minister baptizes you into water. That water's not saving you. That water is your faith proclamation that you have died to your old self, that you have given your life to Christ, you have surrendered all, and now the Holy Spirit baptized you into Christ. You died to yourself, and he raised you up to live as a son or a daughter of God. We're going to imitate that or emulate that in this water next week. And if you've not been baptized, or maybe you were like me, you got baptized early as a teenager or something, and you really didn't understand it, it was just something you're supposed to do, you, you did it, and you want to be rebaptized, get signed up, get signed up. I think we already got a number of folks that were supposed to be baptized this morning, but because we had to bring our services together and maybe some family members and friends couldn't come uh, to support them, we wanted to give everybody the opportunity to be here, pray any snow away next week, no more snow, and, uh, and let's have it next week. But go ahead and get signed up. Let us know. Go to the Welcome Center. Fill out the connection card so you can be a part of this baptism that is needed for optimum life. And then there's a third baptism that the Bible talks about in great detail. And this is where Jesus, say, I love Jesus. Come on, say, oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, how I love Jesus. We love Jesus, right? We're not afraid of Jesus. Jesus is our Savior. If Jesus wants it for us, we want it, right? Well, it's Jesus who baptizes you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The Holy Spirit and fire, Jesus baptizes you. John the Baptist identified Jesus as this. He was speaking. John the Baptist, picture him. He's out there baptizing people in the Jordan River. And then he sees Jesus standing there and he says, Here I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He 
talking of Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Hallelujah. So get this now. This is Jesus baptizing you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Three baptisms. The first one, the Holy Spirit. So don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He baptizes you into the body of Christ and makes you an authentic, genuine child of God when you're born again. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't be saved. Secondly, now we make that faith proclamation. We, we, we're not just uh, sayers, but we're doers of the word. And we go and we are water baptized as a disciple of Christ by the minister. And now third, here's Jesus coming to now baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now it's not a fire where your hair catches on fire. It's not a fire where you're like a dragon and breathe out fire. He's talking about power. Power, being plugged into the power. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, if you're going to live the optimal life, you need all three baptisms. And here at Christian Embassy, you can have all three baptisms without any theological nonsense of having a meter sit up here that looks like a powerful church, but there's not plugged into the power. There's a lot of churches, they want to control everything. They want everything to look so perfect. They don't want somebody getting up out of order, they would say, and interrupting their program. So they put the meter in, but it ain't plugged into the power. And they say, here we are connected with God, and here we are. But really and truly, there's a man or woman or a team or a council or, or somebody uh, board that has put it together, and we're going to do it this way, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's it. And we'll be out of here in 60 minutes on the dot because we are the church. And everybody looks at it and says everything looks like we should be having revival. Everything looks like we should be having illumination. Everything looks like there should be some sound coming from heaven. But nothing's working. Nothing's working. It's getting dark outside like that tent revival. It's getting dark outside. And we've got to shut things down. I'm here to tell you it's getting dark outside. All you got to do is look at the news, look at what's happening around the world. It's getting dark outside. And the churches that are saying, oh, look at us, we've got everything in order, but they have no power, they're going to go out of business when it gets dark outside. Because the darkness is coming at the lead of an enemy who is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And you and I have been given power. I'm telling you, we've been given authority. I'm telling you, we've been given an anointing uh, that the devil, we put him to flight. He doesn't put us to flight. That we cast the mountains out of the way so that we can live in the way that Jesus has called us to live, an abundant life. And if we're not plugged into the power source, we will lose look like it but we won't perform it hallelujah i say i'm plugging us in i'm running over to this meter i should have had brother marty make me one and i'm plugging that meter in we're plugged in we're plugged in hallelujah holy ghost fire holy ghost power now throughout the scripture god has so given us so much detail old testament new testament about the holy spirit shame on any church Shame on any pulpit that speaks against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. This is the Spirit of God that you and I, we need Him. So throughout the Scriptures, we've been given many pictures of the Holy Spirit that is drawn on everyday life because the Holy Spirit wants to be a part of your everyday life. You see places where wind, the Holy Spirit, so the wind of the Holy Spirit, the fire, the power, the rain of the Holy Spirit, the dew of the Holy Spirit. Wake up in the morning and guess what? Holy Spirit's a bit already been there. He's already been there. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. You have access to the Spirit of God 24-7. Oil, anointing, oil for light, oil for power. Ho the, the dove, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit as a dove. But every time the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, it never refers to Holy Spirit as an it. He's not an it. He's a he. Look at it. He, the Holy Spirit, because he is God. We've got to get over this being afraid of God because we're not afraid of God. So we need to not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking about a dreadful fear, not a reverential fear. So when referring to the Holy Spirit, you don't say it. 
You know, the Holy Spirit, it got on me. Uh-uh, you get me upset, I'll, I'll come and unplug you and try to plug you back in. I say something, I uh, ain't no it. This is, this is God. Hallelujah. See, Jesus' main ministry is to baptize us in the Holy Spirit and fire. That's what he came to do. See, John the Baptist introduced Jesus, and he says, he said this. He said in John 1 and 31, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing in water. This is John the Baptist saying, so I didn't know, I didn't know who this anointed one was. So here I come doing what I'm supposed to do, and I'm baptizing with water. And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained, uh-uh, we'll get my slap ready. No, he, he remained upon Jesus. Talking about him, he remained upon him. See, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said unto me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So John said, God told me, the one you see, the Holy Spirit come and descend on like a dove and remain on him. His purpose is to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I testified, this is the Son of God. This is the Son of God. See, the whole purpose of John the Baptist's ministry was to prepare the way for Jesus. He knew that. I'm here to prepare the way. I'm baptizing in water, but I'm just preparing for the baptism that Jesus is going to bring. I mean, his acts were prophetic. In effect, saying, what I'm doing in the water, Jesus is going to do with the Holy Ghost. What I'm getting you immersed and full and completely wet and transformed by the water, Jesus is going to do with the Holy Ghost. He's going to immerse you in the Holy Ghost. He's going to transform you. Every part, every cell from the top of your head to the soles of your feet shall be transformed by the Holy Spirit. When you see everything in the Bible is very, very important. Divinely inspired. We know it's given to us by God. And it's, and it's uh, very profitable in every way. But when you see something that is repeated in all four Gospels, the three synoptic Gospels and the Gospel of John, you know there is like neon lights saying, this one, I don't want you to ever miss it. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. Is Jesus presented as the Messiah in the Gospels? Yes, he is. Is he presented as the Lamb of God in the Gospels? Yes, he is. Is he presented as the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world? Yes, he is. But in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he presents his main aspect of Jesus' ministry as he who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? That Jesus came to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. So that means we need to listen to what Jesus teaches us about the Holy Spirit. Look at John 7 and 37. On that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. See, Jesus was speaking about something in the future at this feast. He said, I've yet to be crucified. I'm yet to die. I am yet to be buried. I am yet to be resurrected. And I'm yet to ascend to the Father. But before I ascend to the Father, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to birth and empower this thing that I'm building called the church. Jesus had one thing. He says, I want you to know me by one thing. I'm going to the Father, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you want to see what my record is and what I've done for you, it's I died. I shed sinless blood. I was buried. I was resurrected, and I ascended on high, and I did it all to cause the, my Father to give reconciliation to mankind through me so that I could by my spirit build something I'm calling the church. 
See, a lot of people want to build something in their name. They kind of were created in the image of God, you know. So a lot of what we have this innate desire to do, we want to make a name for ourselves. We want to leave a mark on society. We want to leave the world better off than when, at the end than when we found it. We want our years to count for something. That comes, I believe, from the image of God. Now, we can get that out of order, and it's all about praising us, or we can surrender and want to do it as unto the Lord. Jesus, he came and he says, this is how you will know, this is what you will know me by. I'm going to leave this functioning, operational powerhouse, this thing called the church. The gates of hell can't prevail against it. Some of the most enforcements and some of the greatest strength of building goes into the gates of a city because they are the most, uh, uh, you might say, vulnerable. Gates are powerful sources, powerfully guarded. There's more attention given to gates than the walls. And let me tell you what, Jesus says everything Satan's got to hold you, to keep you out and everything Satan does when he binds you to keep you in, uh, he said, I'm going to raise up a power source. I'm going to raise up a powerhouse that's going to be plugged into my power, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What Satan's been trying to keep from from you he can't keep from you and what Satan's been trying to keep you in he can no longer keep you in you have access to power you have resource of power Holy Ghost power God power God creating the heavens and the earth power the same Holy Spirit that brought forth the manifest of let there be light is the same Holy Ghost that you have the same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Ghost that you have he dwells in your mortal body Body to quicken it, to give life, to give power to you. Jesus says, I'm building a powerhouse. I don't want it to look like a powerhouse. I want it to be a powerhouse. I don't want it to fake it and look like a studio set that looks like a, a whole town. But if you go through the saloon doors of this town, you walk into a desert. It's all facade. No, I want a real house that is standing with real power against the powers of the enemy, exercising the authority of heaven on this earth. I want to do that in and through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as Jesus' earthly ministry came to an end, he tells his disciples as he's ascending into the clouds, go in Jerusalem and you tarry there until you've been endued from on high with power. And on the day of Pentecost, 10 days later at that feast day, the Holy Spirit came as a mighty rushing wind and tongues as a fire set upon each of them and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance and Paul, I mean Peter, who was uh, hiding and Peter who was lying and Peter who was denying and Peter who was afraid uh, now is emboldened. I'm telling you, he got the meter plugged in and he's like, wait a minute, I got power. I got power. This crowd don't frighten me. They, they, they just killed my Jesus but even if they kill me, I'm going to heaven. I'm not backing down. I'm not shutting up. And he gets up and he preaches the gospel message for the first time. And 3,000 are saved. The church is birthed. And we've been growing ever since as a church birth in the Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. So, so we see that the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ when we are saved. We see the minister baptizes us in water as a proclamation of by faith of what has happened to us in the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit, the Bible says Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit and with fire, with power. Let us look at some of the qualities of this great Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Here's some qualities. He is a comforter. He's a comforter. He's an encourager. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus says, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. He is not only a comforter, but he's a teacher, he's an encourager. When people have a loss, and I usually speak with them or share with them, I send my condolences, our love, but I let them know I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to comfort you as only he can. The Holy Spirit can comfort you with loss. He can comfort you through battles. He can comfort you through trials as no man can. 
And if you're looking to man to meet that need, you will be disappointed. You have access to Almighty God and His comforting power. Now this word uh, comforter comes from a Greek word parakletos. Para, which means in Greek, come alongside. And kletos means that the uh, splints or strength or that stability. So strength from heaven will come alongside your weakness and that will comfort you. A one picture of that is someone breaking their leg and then putting splints on their leg. And now with a splint or a cast or a walking boot, they are able to continue to function and heal and get strong again because of that which comes alongside that brokenness and helps them walk. You don't have to give up your mobility in what God has called you to do because the enemy is sending attacks against you. You have access to the comforter. The Holy Spirit will comfort you, strengthen you, encourage you, cause courage to rise up in you, and you say, wait a minute, what the devil meant for evil, ah, 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 God's going to turn it for good. Devil, you tried to shut me up, I'm going to speak more than I ever was going to speak. Devil, you tried to get me to sit down, I'm going to stand up more than I've ever stood. Devil, you tried to get me to run and hide, I'm going to stand out front and declare the gospel more than ever. No, I am not backing down because I have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Very, very encouraging. Another thing that he is, is he is the spirit of truth. John 14, 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see because it neither sees him nor knows him. There is something born again believers can receive from God that the world can't receive. You can have access to God's truth. Now we're living in a day and age where people are more, I would say, more, oh, I, what is a, a halfway decent nice word to say, uh, yeah, with truth than ever before. And uh, twisted truth, half truth, spun, there's spin everywhere, demonic spin everywhere. And everybody's trying to make their point and nobody's wanting to make God's point. Let me tell you why. You can come to the Holy Spirit in the midst of the most confusion, in the midst of the most dire news that you've ever heard that the world is going through, and you can say, Holy Spirit, you reveal truth to me. You reveal where I need to be. You reveal, reveal to me what I need to do. Everyone who had done this, and there's testimonies of those who did even in the Great Depression when there was a run on the banks and all this, the Holy Spirit had revealed to those who were walking in the Spirit what they were to do and not to do. And that thing came, the crash came, and it did not affect them. Actually, they, it actually promoted them. They, they, they made more millionaires during the Great Depression than ever in the history of the world. So, so you can be uh, ahead of the game because you have access to the truth, not the spin and the lies of the world. He is also our ever-present provider. You do not have to live in fear. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So he comes to care for you. The Holy Spirit is here to care for you, to teach you, to comfort you, and to provide for you. Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, and he will abide with you forever. So he is ever present. You wake up at 4.13 a.m., Holy Spirit is there. You can be, come under a challenge at 9.21 p.m., Holy Spirit is there. He is ever present. You don't have to conjure him up. You don't have to get your goosebumps at a certain uh, 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 millimeter height or anything. You, Holy Spirit is always present. The Spirit of God is always present. He is also our teacher. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, Jesus said. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things which I said to you. I'm here to tell you we have access to the teacher. Some people say, I wish this was an open book test. Let me tell you what, it's better than an open book test 
you have access to the teacher who teaches the instructions after all. And he will guide you. He will bring to your remembrance. That's why it's so important that we're reading that which he has inspired, that God has inspired. The Holy Spirit is written in the word of God. As we hide the word of God in our heart, we will not sin against him. As we study the word of God, as we do our Bible reading, as we discipline ourselves to be a disciple, to learn the word of God, now the truth is in us, even if we don't remember it in the top of our head, it's in us, and the Holy Spirit will bring that to us when we need it. In any situation, any circumstance, if you need to know, he will show you. There have been so many times when I have looked under the hood of a vehicle going, I have no clue. I don't, that looks familiar. I think that's, and the Holy Spirit said, it's this. And I've reached over and, and, and messed with something and, and it worked. It worked. And I'm like, I, I still don't know what that is, but thank God it works. See, the Holy Spirit can teach you anything. I'm th he can make you the best chef in the world. He can make you the best mechanic in the world. He can make you the best engineer in the world. He can make you the best because he can teach you all things. Hallelujah. And we need to rely on him more and more er as we live our lives. We also see that the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not about glor bringing glory to himself. You see the charismatic movement, which we are a charismatic, Pentecostal, evangelical, Holy Ghost church. We're not ashamed of that. But you have extremes in everything. you got extreme uh, frozen chosens, and you got extreme those folks that want to burn the building down and blame it on God. Okay. And if you're not careful, your flesh will, the enemy wants to discredit the Holy Spirit. So he will use your emotions, and, and we are emotional people, and there's nothing wrong with getting excited. But I've seen people demonstrate some of the same emotional uh, uh, exploits at a, you might would say, at a football game that they were really pulling for, as they are actually more so than I've even seen in the church. So there's nothing wrong with celebrating. There's nothing wrong with our emotions and all, but we can't let our emotions drive the vehicle. Okay, we can't do that. It's all right for the ride in the vehicle, but not drive the vehicle. And what the enemy has done in times past with extreme movements uh, is caused people who blame the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit caused them to do the exploits that they did, which actually I've been in services, not in here, but evangelizing in services where the person or persons took over and it was more about them than anything God wanted to do. They were screaming and yelling and running and jumping and kicking and dancing and, and, and in such a way. And there's nothing wrong with dancing. There's nothing wrong with praising. But you got to remember, we're not trying to bring glory to ourselves. We're not bringing attention to ourselves. And here, the Bible says, he, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will glorify me. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So, so Jesus is to be exalted. Jesus is to be worshipped. Jesus is to be celebrated uh, as the Holy Spirit demonstrates and manifests himself in our lives. So, you know, a lot of people say, wow, I'm, I, I, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. And what I want to look at is the fruit of the Spirit. Is the fruit available? Is the fruit being manifest? Because all of that fruit will glorify Christ, right? What is the fruit? Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, faithfulness, goodness, right? Self-control. So sounds like to me it's a good package deal. So... If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, being led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit shows the world that He is in charge and living through you by growing the fruit that only He can produce. You can't produce the divine love, the 1 Corinthians 13 love. We don't have it in us to love people that way. We, you hurt me, I want to hurt you. You, you, got, you did me wrong, I want to get even with you. I, even though we smile and all, in the back of our mind says, oh boy, I wish you would just stumble and fall. I wish you'd slide on that ice and bust your teeth out. You know, you know, and then we don't say it because we're Christians and we've got the meter looking like the church. 
but we're not plugged into the power. Because we plugged into the power, there's a love that comes even for your enemy where you can bless your enemy and, and bless those who curse you. You can't do that in the natural. You need something supernatural to do that. And joy. I'm telling you, we live in a world that is so much turmoil and there's so much uh, uh, negative stuff. But there's a joy that sur there's a joy of the Lord that becomes our strength that you can't conjure up. You can't say, I'm going to be joyful, I'm going to be joyful, I'm going to be joyful. Don't go there, I'm going to be joyful. You get mad trying to be joyful because you can't be joyful. But the Holy Ghost, plugged into the power, produces joy. And patience, oh... A lot of folks show that they got the meter in the base, but they're not plugged into the power. And they'll show it on something as simple as trying to get a, on a, a merging lane. Chill out. I have a daughter that's 17 that's driving, and, and I'm, I always think, you know, what if that's Morgan? She's a little, she's not, but what if she's a little cautious and she's driving a little slower or not? She hadn't mastered the merging. She has. I'm just using that as an example. You know, I'm thinking, why you get all freaking out? I mean, this is crazy. You got more of a demon in you than you got the Holy Ghost. And you need to say, wait a minute, don't church it up. No, I've got to write and justify it. Maybe there is a demon in there. Maybe there is an evil spirit manifesting rather than the Holy Spirit manifesting joy and peace and patience. Oh, and self-control, goodness and faith, but self-control. My, there's things that are like, I won't do it, I won't do it, I won't do it, I won't do it. I did it. I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. I did it. Young people, you got to be careful. I, I won't look at it. I won't look at it. I won't look at it. I won't look. No, 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 no. I won't look at it. I look at it. There's a Holy Ghost power that will give you self control to say no to the things against God and not of God, and yes to the things of God. Like Sister Pearl, there was a there was a go in her this morning. It said go, and it's like, but I got obstacles. Go, go. But there's situations. Go. The reality is, I can't go. And then when she went, someone was there. Holy Ghost had somebody there, angel or real, it doesn't matter. Holy Ghost can use a donkey if he needs to and take care of you. Hallelujah. But it will always glorify Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit is the executor, uh, executor of the will. He's the executor of the will. He is the one who administers our inheritance. The inheritance is not legal until the person dies. And when the person dies, their last will and testament, however it is to be uh, divided and dispersed, then the executor does that. Jesus died. And in order for the will to be legal, even though he was raised from the dead, he had to go to the Father. He says, it, it benefits you. It, it benefits you for me to go. And he says, and when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be the executor of the will. Everything I died for you to have, Holy Ghost will make sure you have it. If I died by my stripes for you to be healed, Holy Ghost will administer healing. If I died for you to be set free from bondage, Holy Ghost will deliver you. If I died to give you peace that surpasses all understanding, the Holy Ghost will give you that peace. Hallelujah. If I died so that you could walk in authority over all the power of the enemy, it's the Holy Ghost going to give you the authority and the power to trample underfoot what the devil's doing against you. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 16 and 15, All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that He, the Holy Spirit, will take of mine... And declare it to you. So Holy Ghost, everything the Father wants has given to me. And I came and redeemed and made available for you. Holy Spirit, if it's in the atonement, it's yours. He's the executor of the will. Hallelujah. And we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So we must understand that the Holy Spirit is not... No wonder these unplugged, fake, facade, man-controlled, religious institutions don't want Holy Ghost. Because if you're plugged into the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to run it heaven's way. 
God, Holy Ghost is going to... Jesus said, I'm building my church and I've sent the Holy Spirit, my spirit, to be the builder, to be the inspector, to be the power source, to pay the bills, to come against the obstacles, to run off the enemy. And, and, and if you can't be in control if you let the Holy Spirit be in control. But if you want to be in control but yet claim to be a church, you put your facade up and you put on your little fake front and you do your little fake show and it may be a little entertaining but there's no power. I'm telling you, the executor of the will says you have access to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost power, and I'm here to see that you get it. And there's so many denominations, so many churches so afraid of the Holy Ghost. No wonder the devil is working through them that way. No wonder the enemy is scaring people that way. Because if the Holy Ghost is the executor of the will, let me tell you what, I want to be friends with the executor of the will. You know, when my father passed a number of years ago, and there was uh, some, some uh, estate left for his three kids, I wanted to be friendly with those that were dispersing those things, okay? And uh, because I didn't want to be at odds with them, and I didn't want to be contrary to them, because they legally stood between me and my inheritance, okay? The Holy Spirit not only is the one that's standing between you and your inheritance, he is, he is the one that wants nothing more than to give you your full inheritance, teach you how to use your inheritance, empower you to function in your inheritance as the head and not the tail and above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. And then finally, the Holy Spirit, I've said it a thousand times here today, i say it again, gives us supernatural power 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 we're living in a day and age where viruses flex their muscle uh, worldwide and say we have power and the enemy is flexing his muscle through armies and 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 and, and you might would say brigades and all that it built up and it looks so ominous and they say we have power and there's some of the largest countries in the world say, we're going we're gonna to take over and take back what we want and we don't care the consequences because we have power. And, and there's financial bullies saying, we're going to do it this way and you're going to pay out the nose because we have the power. I'm here to tell you, all of those powers, come on, all of those powers, you can pick your foot up and put under the sole of your feet. Russia's power, you can put under the sole of your feet. Uh, Wall Street's power, you can put under the soles of your feet uh, because Jesus said, I've given you authority over all the powers of the enemy and he by no means shall harm you. You have access to the power of heaven. You have access to the power of God. You have access to the authority over the power of the enemy. It's time and we make sure we're plugged in uh, to the power and we say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, flow in me, flow through me. Have your way, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need this experience of not only being born again where Jesus or the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ, if you're not born again, you can't be an heir of God. You can't be an heir of Christ. If you're not born again, you're not a son or daughter of God. You have to be born again. Holy Spirit is here right now, right at this second. He's right here, he in pres present in this building at 1208 Centerville Turnpike North, Chesapeake, Virginia, or in your home or at your work. He's right here right now at this very second, ready to baptize you into the body of Christ as a son or a daughter of God. He responds to your response. Where Paul said, if you'll believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, confess with your mouth. And this is literally, basically in the Greek, literally what he said. Confess with your mouth, I surrender my life to you, Jesus. And to your call, your purpose, your will for my life. It's no longer I that live, but you that live in me. I surrender all. The Holy Spirit will baptize you. Supernatural. I can't do it. He'll do it right now. Supernaturally, he will plug you into the body of Christ. Of that which you were created to be. And you'll become a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You'll become a joint heir with Jesus Christ. 
He actually says the records of heaven are changed. There's, there's activity in heaven. He says several things are happening. One, your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. Two, the angels in heaven begin to rejoice and celebrate seeing your name written, knowing that the Holy Spirit is birthed, brought into the body of Christ, another child of God. But you've got to believe and you've got to confess that you've surrendered to Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? If so, the Holy Spirit has baptized you in the body of Christ. You are a part of the body of Christ. You are a son of God, daughter of God. Then secondly, we need to be baptized in water. You need to make that public proclamation. You need to make that declaration. Don't be ashamed of God before men. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of God before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. This is not If it's genuine, you truly have surrendered all to Christ. Now you'll let the world know. You'll let your friends know. I'm going to be baptized. And this immersion in water shows that I have totally surrendered, been baptized, totally given of my life to Christ and raised up as I come up raised up to live my life for him hallelujah so what we need is to let a minister baptize you in water and in third we need the upper room experience the birthing of the church the continuation of the church we need an immersion and a baptism in the Holy Spirit Jesus does that remember first baptism you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, right? And you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You confessed him as Lord and Savior, right? So now Jesus has full control of your life, right? Say amen, amen. You gave him the reins. You gave him the steering wheel. Jesus, you take the wheel. Holy Spirit baptized you in the body of Christ. Now you've uh, obeyed the word of God, become a disciple of Christ, had water baptism. And a minister has baptized you in water. And now third, let Jesus, who you gave the wheel at first one, let him baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And you too can have an upper room experience where there's an immersion or baptism into the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You let him fill you complete. And, all, and there's that infilling. The Bible says out of the abundance of their heart, their mouth began to speak as uh, tongues as, as a fire and the wind came upon them. Now, supernaturally, there's an uh, outward expression. God has so much power in the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Blessing and cursing is the power of the tongue. He wants to relieve blessing. He wants to relieve, release life. So they begin to uh, have an outflow and they begin to speak forth. They begin to speak forth. They were filled, then it out, flows out. Hallelujah. So here's the scriptural pattern for receiving the Holy Spirit. And the best way for me to explain it straight from the Bible. Look here at John 7, 37 through 39. And I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with this here. This is, this is how you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified, okay? So here we see in these verses, let's just break it down. First he says, if any man thirst, you need to be thirsty. I pray preaching like this has made you thirsty. I'm supposed to be the salt of the earth. You are supposed to be the salt of the earth. Hanging around Christians should make you thirsty. We're the salt block. I shared that last week. How on the farm, you know, animals, they got to have a certain amount of salt. The body has to have a certain amount of salt. And our animals, we didn't have to show them where our salt block was. We didn't have to come and say, teach them, get down and lick it for them to show them you're supposed to lick this. Because they needed that, that salt, they would go and lick it. But we'd always put the salt block near the water trough. Because we knew that when they licked that salt block, that salt made them thirsty. We didn't have, you know, they sing, lead of water. But you can't make him lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Put a little salt in his mouth. Put a little salt in his mouth. Boy, he will suck up that water out of that trough so fast. We as Christians should be living such a demonstrative life, such a joy-filled life. The fruit of the Spirit should be so evident. The manifesting of the Spirit should be so evident through our life that people around us are hungry and thirsty. I want that. I want that. I want to live like that. I want to see that in my life. I want to see that in my family. I want to see that in my health. I want to see that in my wealth. I want to see that. I want to, we need, thirst. you got to have thirst. 
If you're thirsty, ask. He said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and ask. Well, we know the scripture says you, you ask the Father. Jesus said, if you'll ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, he will not withhold the Holy Spirit, and Jesus will come and administer the baptism. So we got to come unto me, Jesus. Jesus is the baptizer, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if any man comes unto me, I will by no means cast him out. And then finally, the third one is drink. we got to drink. And this is where folks have trouble. Drink means that there's a voluntary act. I could take your head and hold it under the water, but I can't make you drink. You blow bubbles rather than drink, okay? Drink is a voluntary act for you to receive the Holy Spirit. You, there has to be a, you have to participate. You have to participate, right? Drinking only happens on a person's own volition. And I ask you to make your to biblically and theologically see that this is God's plan for me. I'm ready to drink. I'm out of ready to drink. And Jesus said, once you do, John 7, 37, he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because what you, you take one drink and it becomes a river. Why? Because you're being plugged into the power. You're being plugged into the power. The drink, your voluntary act to drink. Holy Spirit, I receive you. Jesus, yes, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. And now you get plugged in. And now rivers of living water are flowing out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I encourage you. Please don't let poor theologians, fearful men and women of the religious ranks scare you from God's plan for you. Oh, that we would come to Jesus and we would just receive. I close with Luke 11 and 11. This is my third close, so it has to be the final one, okay. <laughs> Remember, we put two services together. It's almost like, I, I'm, okay, help me, Lord, okay. If a son asks for bread from a father, Jesus is teaching this. Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would he give him a serpent instead of the fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Jesus said, if you then, being evil, mean of this world, the limitations of this evil world, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. How much more will the Holy the Father give the Holy Spirit to ask him? Remember who administers it? Jesus said, I administer what the Father wants me to administer. And I'm here. Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, is here to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. If you've been baptized into the body of Christ as a, a, a getting saved, say hallelujah. If you've been baptized in water or plan to be baptized in water, say, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. And if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit or desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, say, count me in. Count me in. Plug, me in. Plug me in. Let the power flow. Let the power flow. In Jesus' name.